prior videos, I presented recommended editions of the Mozart Bassoon Concerto and discussed playing all of the notes. In this video, we will examine the Urtext edition of the work and consider further articulations. It is often unrecognized by today's musicians that the classical period is an extension of Baroque performance practice. On January 1st, 1851, European musicians didn't suddenly wake up and think, now it's the classical period, everything is new in music. No, styles, ideas, and trends in the Baroque period continued well into the classical period. This is particularly true for the concertos. In the Baroque period, composers and musicians collaborated on the finished project, the performed music. In many ways, this is analogous to jazz performance practice in the 20th and 21st centuries. Every jazz musician is expected to take the music, which is the chart, and then add their unique performance of it, most often including improvisation. Such was also the Baroque practice of performance. The composer provided a framework of music for the musician, to which the performer added flourishes, graces, ornaments, and articulations. This can be clearly seen in the continual music for Telemann's Sonata in F Moll. Telemann provided the keyboard player with a bass line and numbers, referred to as figures. The keyboard musician was then expected to create an accompaniment with the right hand that filled in the part. Accomplished keyboard artists of that time would improvise this accompaniment on the spot. For more information about this, please see the seminal work on keyboard playing in the Baroque period. There are several aspects of this performance practice that carry into the classical period. Improvisation was featured in instrumental cadenzas. Ornamentation was added by performers in solo works. Furthermore, composers expected performers to add articulation to the music. Finding an urtext edition that is, a version that provides music as close to the autograph as possible, is vital for deciding articulation. Choosing an edition where all the articulation decisions are made by an editor removes freedom of expression from the performer. You should welcome the opportunity to showcase your musical judgment and taste. Every performer should play the concerto differently. One would not expect every performance of the jazz standard, Lady Bird, to be identical. In fact, that is abhorrent and antithetical to the very nature of jazz performance. Likewise, a cookie-cutter approach to the concerto makes mockery of the intent of the concerto during the classical period. The concerto is meant to showcase the musician's expertise as an innovator and interpreter, not just a technician. Here is the opening of the solo in the first movement of the concerto from the Neue Mozart Ausgabe NMA website. I have extracted the bassoon part from the online Urtext edition. Let's compare the NMA edition to the universal edition of the work, the version that I have performed from for many years. There are a few differences in the articulation, which I have circled in red. In the NMA edition, there's a slur in measure 35 that is not contained in the universal edition. In the NMA edition in measure 36, the slur is recommended by the editor. Since this is a repetition of this earlier measure, it makes perfect sense to add it. Milan Turkovich, the editor of the Universal Edition, recommends adding a slur in measure 38. 
slurring trills into the following note is typical for classical music, and this is an excellent recommendation. A careful study of the concerto will reveal that there are few slur marks added. Mozart has left decisions about additional slurs up to the performer. The concerto is thus a partially completed painting on which the performer should add further brush strokes. This is not a paint by numbers project. Rather, you should produce a unique artistic expression. Certain principles guide the choice of articulation. The choice of slurs can aid in clarity and technical facility. For instance, I find the slurred pairings at the end of the solo section in measure 148 quite helpful. Adding slurs to the arpeggios, for instance, in measures 45 to 46, may also help clarity. There are several combinations that would work here. Two slurred and two tongued. Three slurred and one tongued. Or all slurred. Lyricism is aided by adding slurs. For instance, at the end of the opening statement in measure 55, this slur indicated by the dash line here is recommended by the MNA editor. Added slurs provide emphasis to notes. Longer notes are more audible than shorter notes. Adding slurs helps bring out the important melodic line D4, B flat 3, F3, D3, B flat 2. I encourage you to carefully read the transcript of John Miller's masterclass on the Mozart Bassoon Concerto. In it, Mr. Miller provides some helpful comments on articulation in the concerto. Choices of articulation are just the start to your individual expression of the concerto. In the next video, I will present how ornamentation in the concerto can further demonstrate your innovation as a performer. Thank you.